Have you ever wondered what the best food trucks in New York City are? We've got the answer. Is doing your hair in the morning a big hassle? Well, don't worry, Naja has some tips for you. And coming up next, we have the highlights of the WBC Championship. So let's get right into it. Hi everyone, I'm Marjani Brown. And I'm Naja Jack. And, and you're, you're watching, watching The Main. Main. If you're a fan of food trucks, then you will love this. Alicia and her crew went out to Governor's Island to find out who had the best food truck across New York City. We are at Governor's Island at the Vendi Awards, um, and we are eating delicious food by New York City street vendors. As you can see, we are here at Governor's Island at the Vendi Awards, where dozens of food truck vendors try to find out who the best of the best here in New York City. There are multiple categories to win, such as best in market and best rookie, but only one Vendi Cup. Each vendor has its own special touch. For example, this vendor from Queens makes his mark by making lamb skewers with a special grill. Even our very own crew enjoyed his creation. The fornicella, it's typical only found in Abruzzo, Italy, and it's made specifically for the skewers. There are certain dimensions, certain size, and it fits right down, the, this is called the gutter of it. So you feed the coals over here, and once they get ready, feed the coals down and you just put the skewers right on top. It's made specifically for these skewers and only for this type of meat. Another vendor brings his own unique touch to the vendies. Pizza is very common in New York, but theirs stands out above the rest. Well, this is a grandma thin crust, old fashioned Sicilian. It's called a grandma pie. It's called a tomato pie in other places. We call it original old fashioned thin crust Sicilian. We bake the mozzarella first. We put the sauce on top. There was so much food for the public to enjoy, accompanied with music and drinks for the adults. People here just to enjoy themselves. Oh my God, this is my first year, but I've heard that the food is amazing. The food trucks are in competition to see who gets to win that, that ultimate trophy to take home. I'm so excited and I'm not even going to win the trophy. I just want to taste, taste, taste. Yeah, it's been awesome. Everyone has been like united here because of their love of food. So that's been super exciting to meet, you know, like people. Um, it's so diverse again, too. Um, so that's been really exciting. And I think the atmosphere is pretty good so far. Yeah. Unfortunately, there can only be one winner here today at the Vendi Awards. So for all you losers out there who did not win, better luck next year. I'm Alicia Rollins here on Governor's Island, and this is your main event. Ever wonder how certain Truman girls tie their hair up in all these pretty different ways? Well, in my segment, Jack of All Trades, I teach people how to tie up their hair. Let's take a look. Hi, I'm Naja. And I'm Danelli. And this is Jack, Jack of, of All, all Trades. Trades. In this segment, we are going to make tutorials of different um, questions that you guys ask us as the viewers. This week's viewer asks, I went natural in 2015 and I just recently cut all my hair off. I'm a little insecure about it and I wanted to start tying my hair up but I don't know how. How do you tie a head wrap and why do you wear one? Um, why oh, do you wear head wraps? I don't wear hair wraps, I'm Mexican. <laughs> this doesn't work. So I, <laughs> I tie head wraps because in my culture to protect um, my hair, um, like my crown, from other people's energy or like other people touching it, I tie it up because a, a, a lot of people like to touch my hair and that's a thing in my culture that my family doesn't like. I mean like if I like you, you can <laughs> if I, I don't like, like you and like I let you touch it, but like some people just go without permission and that's a no-no, so that's why I tie my hair up. So now we're gonna demonstrate how to tie up your hair three different ways because I can't see you. So you either have short hair, medium to short hair, I like box braids like I do right now. So, um, yeah, let's get into the video. Okay, I started by telling her to put her hair in a bun because you don't want any loose hairs out in the middle of, like, your head wrapping process. So I told her to put her hair up so that, you know, all the hair is secure and inside the head wrap. You're going to start off with two yards of fabric. Um, you can get your fabric from Yard Fabric on 125th. That's where I got this one. And this specifically is called the Teak Fabric. You're going to take the front, the shorter half, and you're going to fold it in half. And you're going to place that part on your forehead. 
you can hold it usually by myself i literally put my head up against the wall because i don't have three hands but yeah you can just hold it then you take the two ends in the back and you tie them as if you're tying a regular scarf like as if you're going to sleep but you flip the back up so you want to tie it under and not over you want to tie it around the bun so you want to tie it tight because throughout the process you'll be like moving it around and shifting it and you just don't want it to come apart. You're going to take the hair back down and you're going to leave um, room for your ears because it's really going to hurt if you take it off um, after like wearing it for the day. Uh, then you're going to take it and you're going to tie it over the bun the same way you tied it under. <laughs> I promise I'm not hurting her. it and start wrapping it over but make sure that you leave those two um, pieces out and you're going to keep wrapping it then you wrap it one time without twisting it and then you're going to twist it like so and then keep wrapping it around now the most important part of wrapping a head wrap is making sure that you tuck everything because if you don't Sometimes the way you move your head, it'll come out or it'll be too loose and it'll just be a mess and it'll fall apart. So you want to make sure that you tuck everything. You tuck that behind the largest roll you have. So you're just going to tuck it really tight and like you can feel it whether it's too loose or not. And for the look of it, like if you want it, depending on how pretty you want it to be, you're going to tuck it. Then you're going to take those two pieces and tuck them closest to the center as possible because you want it to look like a nice little flower Um, two yards of fabric you're gonna fold the front except this one is on the top of her head so it's a little bit different so you're gonna do the same beginning steps um, and you're gonna tie it behind the head right at the back now that she didn't want it that tight for some odd reason which kind of made it a little more difficult but it does up to you I prefer to tie it tighter but you know you could tie it Um, again, make sure to leave your ears out because that's really, really going to hurt when you take it off after wearing it for the day. And again, you tie this at the front of the knot. If you do not have enough space, like enough fabric for that, then you can just leave it out and tuck them later. But if you do, then tie it in front of um, your ponytail or ponytail. Then you're going to take the back and um, instead of rolling this one up, you're just going to twist it once, you twist it just one time and then you like wrap it over. And then as you go, as you go throughout the head wrap, you keep like you twist it, but just once as you see, like you just twist it once and then wrap and twist it once and then wrap. Don't keep twisting because then it's going to look too like bulky and it won't be even. And yeah, like I said in the last one, just, you know, keep, like, make sure that you tuck the pieces and any other, like, hanging pieces. Okay. Yeah, make sure, she didn't want it that tight, so that's why that happened. If you tie it tight, that won't happen. But yeah, tucking is very essential to wrapping any head wrap. So make sure that you, like, tuck the fabric and make sure you wrap it around so it looks like a little pretty flower. And that's how you tie a head wrap. Thanks for watching Jack of All Trades. So if you want to submit questions to us, you can um, either send them um, to my Instagram or my Snap. So thanks for watching. We'll, we'll see, see you, you next, next week. week.
15th was a very special day for our WBC fans. If you happen to miss the fight between Canelo and Triple G, don't worry, because we have a special highlight package for you. The super fight that happened on September 15th against the Mexican boxer Canelo Alvarez and the undefeated Kazakhstan boxer Gennady Genevich Govokin was a match to remember as the two gave a heck of a beating for the second time this year. During the first round, Canelo was pushing G, which is an unusual thing for a counterpuncher, landing hard hits in the head and to the body. This was lowering down Triple G until the sixth round, where G turned the tables landing hard head punches to Alvarez, tying up the scores. A very intense yet close fight for all 12 rounds. Canelo Alvarez beat Triple G, winning the WBC middleweight champion and G taking his first professional defeat in his career. It is unknown if a third fight will happen, but I'm sure Triple G will want his rematch, and so are the fans. I'm Kevin Hernandez and this is your fight of the month. Have you ever thought about buying eyelashes but don't know how to apply them? Well, myself and Tamara have a very special segment on how to apply lashes. The two tools you would need is the glue and a tweezer. You could get lashes from anyone in your local beauty supply store the glue on the strip of the lashes you have to hold the eye that you're working on stretch it out and place the lashes on that eye and then clip it down and boom you're done That's all we have for you today. I'm Naja Jack. And I'm Marjani Brown. And thank you for watching The, the Main. Main.